Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. You guys know what time it is. Time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And one of my subscribers has linked me a video from the actor Tom Ellis. It was in Men's Health. And he's like, Jason, what do you think about his routine for getting into shape for Lucifer? So let me go ahead and put on my plus five out of speechcraft. Let's talk about this. And if you guys will click the like down below, I'd appreciate it. I have three guys still running the dislike bot every day as they've been doing seven days a week for the past three years straight. If you guys would offset that, I would greatly appreciate it, but only if you actually enjoy the video. So, Tom's routine. Um, how would I describe it? A little bit fluffy, but it wasn't the worst I've ever seen. Uh, some of the basics are actually there, the fundamentals that you need, because uh, you guys have to remember, most actors are not trying to get particularly stacked. Not that it's easy to get stacked. They're not trying to squat 500 pounds. They're not trying to bench 300 for a nice meat legal pause, anything like that. Most of them just want to get a little bit of ab, a little bit of bicep, nice round shoulders, some V-taper, right, and, and abs, and not have total chicken legs. That's usually their goal. Um, and so in that case, you don't necessarily need a particularly serious program. Now, what he said up front, which I thought was uh, amusing, was that, again, it's a four-day-a-week upper lower, which is how I personally train even for powerlifting. Uh, so that's not bad. Not to say that that's where he needs to be at in terms of his level of advancement because, you know, Tom is still more or less what we would describe as a novice lifter in terms of his development, his strength, everything else. In other words, he, he's at a level of uh, muscle mass that people should be able to reach in less than a year. Right, in less than a year. And essentially, it's kind of that Hollywood illusion of putting on a little bit of muscle in just the right places so that you look bigger on camera. Doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to look bigger walking down the street. Uh, you might still end up being 160 pounds at 5 foot 11. But uh, the point is, they do want a certain shape. And a lot of that involves a little bit of wider shoulder, a little bit of V taper, getting your body fat down so that you have at least visible abs, at least the outline of abs. So realistically speaking, what he's doing for training would, would work for that. It's just I thought it was funny that he had two days dedicated to, to lower body because I'm like, he doesn't look like a strong squatter to me. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute because he actually demonstrated a little bit of the squatting and it's apparent that he doesn't really actually squat. Um, at least not in any way that's, that's remotely serious towards a strength goal. But over to the point, he started off with a bench press. Bench press and the pull-up. Well, those are pretty good exercises to start off with. I mean, realistically speaking, for a first-year lifter who is just trying to build their base, build up a chest, build a wider back, all those things, fantastic choices. What sort of training volume? Looks like he was working around four sets of something like 8 to 10. Four sets of 8 to 10 done twice a week on those lifts. Pretty reasonable amount of training volume. You can grow off that. You'll grow decently off that. Not what I would prescribe for a novice. But is it decent? Yeah, you can build a base off that. The downside is, of course, that uh, his trainer kept touching the bar and he wasn't coming down and fully touching his chest on the bench. Short changing your chest development doing that, you, you do need to touch. You do need to touch your chest on the bench. Every single rep. Now, I didn't like how slow some of the tempo was a little bit, but that's okay. I would much rather see a slow tempo with good form, even though I'm big on speed training. I'm big on dynamic training. I want most people to lift as explosively as they can with good form. But when you're dealing with someone who maybe isn't that serious about their training, I would rather see them go slower with good form than I would see them flop around and do stupid crap trying to lift explosively when they can't actually lift explosively. So, I mean, there's a trade-off there for, for non-serious lifters. So, um, I'm not actually going to freak out about that. That's not really that bad. Um, in, in fact, it, it's probably decent for his overall goals. He's trying to not get hurt, trying to, to generate a little bit of fatigue, put a little bit of muscle in the right places. Um, there's worse things you could be doing. I, I don't think it's bad necessarily for his goals. It's just not optimal. And, and that's a big difference there. But bench press, pull-ups. Um, he's actually doing a respectable range of motion on the pull-up. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. If you could pick one exercise, one exercise for someone who says, man, I just want to look a little bit more like a lift. I don't want to get real big. What would give me the most bang for my buck? I'm going to go a full range of motion pull-up where you go all the way down, come all the way up, get strong on that. You get strong on that, you, that will actually make you look wider and thicker and more fit. It'll develop a pretty good amount of your upper body, right? It will. Biceps, rear delts, lats, it'll give you a little bit of a V taper, build your shoulders up, 
a little bit. Even though it uses mostly bicep, there's a little bit of tricep at the lower part of it. It's not going to add much or add a little. It'll do a little bit for your upper chest. It actually works your abs a little bit. Uh, all around, that's not a bad lift. I mean, if someone's saying, hey, I kind of want that sort of little bit of Hollywood type physique, which again, certain people promote, that's what they write programs specifically for, um, I would think the pull-up would be a real high priority. And it makes sense because it's a, it's a very good use of exercise economy for someone with that sort of goal. Um, it can become problematic to train really hard. As you guys know, I kind of dropped them out. I got really strong at one time on weighted pull-ups. Um, I've more or less dropped them out for rows because it's more specific to my sport. But, I mean, if you're looking to just build a base and just get wider and thicker, especially trying to build a V-taper, good choice. Give you a little bit of arm development. It's a, it's a good use of your time. So, I mean, he did that in a bench press right up front. Pretty good. Uh, then he did a bunch of extra shoulder work. And that's going to be a big deal. I mean, that's honestly going to be the big secret to the Hollywood type physique. Because, like, his curls were really fluffy. They were really fluffy and kind of kind of useless. He's not getting much out of them the way he's doing them. That little slow controlled holding it up at the top instead of actually really focusing on getting good at curls um, through, through a full range of motion. And, uh, you know, the cheating, we could argue about cheating all that we want. All right, that's a totally separate topic. It's not necessarily a bad thing as long as progressive tension overload is present and you're, you're not hurting yourself. It actually isn't going to stop bicep growth. But doing what he's doing with really light weights of just holding them at the top and bringing one down really slow at a time, that's going to give suboptimal stimulation. Most of his bicep development is coming from those pull-ups, not the curls. But over to the other point, he did two different delt exercises. Well, when you think about what they're looking for in that Hollywood-type physique, Again, makes sense, especially if he's doing about four sets of each one. Going to get well-rounded shoulder balance from that. Now, I'm not big on the seated dumbbell shoulder press. I would much rather see people do a standing barbell press, particularly a novice lifter like that. Uh, it'll give better overall shoulder girdle development, better overall strength. The upper chest will get more developed, everything else. But at least he's doing an overhead press. He's doing an overhead press with a reasonable amount of volume. Again, the trainer needs to get his hand off the, off the dumbbells and the arms, though, because you guys got to remember that. If someone is touching your weights, you cannot properly track your progressive overload. And if you can't track progressive overload, you can't ensure ideal muscle growth. You can't track your workload. You can't track your progress. You need to know what you're capable of lifting on your own day in, day out on your work sets. And people touching the bar or the weight or your arms is a problem. But that aside, he did that, and then he did some, some side lateral raises. Um... I'm going to say it doesn't matter what type he did. It's not relevant that he chose cables or bands or dumbbells or one arm or two arm. The point is he did a side lateral raise combined with an overhead press. Uh, that's going to finish his shoulders off. I mean, if you, if you get reasonably strong at the weighted pull-up, well, in his case, he just did body weight. But again, he's doing 10 pull-ups. For a recreational type lifter to get strong enough to do more than one set of 10 on a pull-up, that's going to build you a pretty decent base on your upper body. Uh, he's doing works that's 185 on the bench. That's nothing spectacular. Uh, we should be exceeding that after a year in the gym. But build a little bit of a base. And so at this point, he's just rounding out his shoulders from there. You've got to remember, you're working your front delt on the bench. You're working your rear delt on the pull-up. By putting in that side lateral and an overhead press, he's pretty much finishing out all the heads of the delt. Getting a little bit of upper trap development. It's going to finish out that Hollywood look that he wants. And quite frankly, those four exercises will probably do it. Now he threw in a curl of some type. And, and again, um, if you wanted more bicep, I don't think it's unreasonable at a certain point to be doing a curl. I just wouldn't do what he was doing. But all in all, I mean, the, the other four exercises, if you think about it, that focus of those four exercises will kind of build that look that people are wanting for that. Just put in your work on those. Do it on twice a week. Four sets of each one, that, that's a reasonable workload as long as progressive overload is present um, and eating enough protein and enough food. Yeah, it, it'll actually work for what he's doing. Then he kind of only gives some lip service to the lower body, and that's where I'm going to be real critical. All right, the first thing that bothered me is so about the squat, and I would agree the squat is, is an extremely important exercise. It's a foundational exercise, and I'm not saying that just because it's a contested lift in my sport because I don't even do normal squats right now. All right, I'm not in meat prep. I'm not prepping for a meet. I actually do only box squats. I don't even do a normal back squat. And in fact, most of my box squats are done with, with specialty bars or done with bands or done with chains, things like that, speed work, max effort work. Um, but 
The squat's a foundational exercise. The problem I noticed immediately, he's got the pad on there. All right, pads get you hurt. Uh, it's fine if you have really, really delicate shoulders and your first time in the gym to maybe use a little bit of thicker cloth. But that pad, if you ever put any respectable amount of weight on there, will actually get you hurt. So he was talking about, you know, you want to avoid lower back injuries. That, that pussy pad on the squat bar will contribute to lower back injuries if you ever build even a remotely decent strength base on the squat. Right? You get even remotely decent at the squat, that thing will hurt you. It, it will injure you because it, it affects the stability of the lift. It fe- affects the center of gravity in a negative way. That thing has to go. Um, as you guys see with me, I have no problem putting 500 pounds worth of weight on top of my traps on my bare skin without a shirt on. I do it regularly. It doesn't hurt. It's not a problem. You just have to learn how to set the bar correctly, and you have to get used to it. You actually will build a callus up across your shoulders over time where the bar goes. Uh, you'll build it up to the point to where 500 pounds won't even hurt on top of your bare skin without a shirt. It's not really an issue. Uh, again, you just have to get used to it, but you're not going to get used to it using that pad and you're not going to learn how to squat correctly. But then we kind of come over to the point. So he goes up to about 60 or 70 kilos. Guys, that's basically for Americans, that's one, one play to side. You should be doing that like your third week in the gym as a right novice. <laughs> and I mean for full range of motion, a correct squat. Um, so again, he, he obviously doesn't take the squat seriously because he benches more than he squats on his work set. So he's kind of giving lip service to it, but at least I can appreciate the fact that he at least mentioned having two leg days every week and they include the squat. So I'll give credit where credit is due for that. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.